It's easy for a town to be forgotten. Places that once held people's fascination fade just as quickly as a shooting star in the night. Others become a smaller version of itself, unrecognizable even with its history to those who used to occupy its space. Today, we're heading to such a place, a town now largely unknown, except to those who call her home. Hey sightseers, Sightseeing Sally here. I'm with Marty, he's around somewhere. And today we're checking out Kingston. You know, Kingston, nine miles north of Hillsboro. If you watched my last two videos, you'll know that I had mentioned it being one of the boom towns here in New Mexico. So we're gonna walk around first checking out the cemetery and then later we're gonna head into town so you can all see what's left of this old silver mining boom town. Originally called Purchase City, Kingston was established in 1882 thanks to Jack Shedden, a prospector who discovered a rich load of silver in what became the Solitaire Mine. Later, the town was renamed after the Iron King, the largest silver mine in the district. I heard something clanking in the wind. Not sure if you can read that, but it looks like it says George Christmas. Wonder if that's related to this grave site here. And I almost missed this one. I haven't run into anybody with the last name of Christmas before till today. I know one thing, the views from up here are just amazing. Located on Percha Creek beneath the Black Range Mountains, Kingston is surrounded by the beauty of the Gila National Forest. Like usual, Marty's way ahead of me spotted something rather interesting here. If I had to guess, he probably found what we've been looking for this whole time. The oldest part of the cemetery. But before we show you any of the graves, Marty spotted something else that might be even more intriguing to some of you. So we're gonna just quick catch up with him. What are you looking at, Marty? The malt line prints. Being up here in the high elevation, they look like mountain lion prints. Oh yeah, that is quite distinct, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, you can see them all over in here. Just to compare the size. Meanwhile, Marty's checking out a grave that's from like 1839, I think he said. Correction, 1889 and 1899, not 1839. Here's one, Virginia Wedgwood, born in 1873 and died in 1900. Wow, she was only 27 years old. And then just in front is this little marker that has VW on it. I wonder if that is her original marker and somebody put up this more elaborate marker. I wonder what kind of life she led. In a town mainly populated by miners and prospectors, most unmarried women were there solely to entertain the men. You can see snow still on the ground, indicating that it is still winter up here in Kingston and not exactly warm if the snow hasn't melted up here in the sun. Well, here's something cool I wasn't expecting to see. An old piece of glass up here in the cemetery. You can tell it's really old because one, it's super thick and two, it kind of has that milky appearance that some of the glass had back then. Another cool old grave here underneath the tree. I think it says, in memory of Ann S., wife of J.M. Moore. Kingston's first winter was unusually harsh. Plagued with record-breaking snowfall and a smallpox epidemic, many of the townsfolk died. Dynamite had to be used to blast open the ground for graves.
Here's another one. Looks like either the marker's long gone or it never had one. This headstone has some interesting symbols on it. Marty was thinking something along the lines of Shriners. I personally have no idea. If anybody knows, leave a comment. This looks like to be somebody's resting spot. You can see the outline of the rocks, but there's no marker here. Who do you think's buried here? Well, person obviously, but I don't know how many. It's like quite a big plot. If you show another picture of it, me standing there, you can see it's like a double plot. Yeah, it is quite oh, large. Hole in each corner, quite wide. Here's another site that caught my eye. I wonder if the stonework is as old as the burial or if it was placed on later. Let's see if I can get Marty over here and his expert opinion on it. This definitely was made 120, 130 years ago. It's as old as the burial is. And for the gate? It's definitely old before welders because you don't see any welding on any of this. I wonder how they fit these in here so they don't never moved. Maybe it was one of those things where they heated it up and then when it got cold, it expanded or whatever it did, it was a tight fit then. That's exactly it. Well, as interesting as this is, we should probably head to town so you can see what's left of Kingston today. But before I go any further, I have a couple of quick shout outs to give to several individuals for their generosity in helping us get out and film these awesome places. First, a special thanks to Sue from Illinois and Doug from Vermont for tipping the trip jar. And then a special thanks goes out to Deborah, Ronnie and Joseph for all becoming our latest patrons on Patreon. Thanks guys, we really appreciate it. Now back to Kingston. Over here happens to be the location of the old Mountain Pride Hotel. As you can see, there's nothing left of the old hotel that once stood here. And you'll find as we go along, that's the case for a lot of the old buildings here in Kingston. And we'll get into that later as to why that is. There's my partner hanging out. You wanna say hi? I'm busy playing my game. <laughs> I'm not surprised. You see how that works, don't you? Moving along. At one time, multiple stagecoach lines ran through Kingston, including the Mountain Pride Coach, owned by none other than Henry and Sadie Orchard, founded sometime between 1878 and 1882. By 1888, Sadie and her husband were running the Orchard Stagecoach Line with daily stops in the towns of Kingston, Hillsboro and Lake Valley. In 1902, Fred Mister of Hillsboro purchased the line and ran it until about 1916. Looking down Main Street of Kingston, we can see on the left what I believe used to be the old Victorio Hotel. Built in 1885, it was named after the Apache chief, Victorio. Now a private residence, you can see the old stonework that it's made out of. If only those walls could talk. It's my understanding that people like Billy the Kid, Black Jack Ketchum, and even President Grover Cleveland were supposed to have been here back in the day. Known as the Gem of the Black Range, Kingston is said to have been the largest town in the territory and one of the wildest. People like Lillian Russell, Mark Twain, Butch Cassidy, and the Sundance Kid all spent time here. And then there was, of course, people like Sadie Orchard, who you heard all about in my video on Hillsboro. In front of me is the street where she supposedly once had a brothel. 
we'll take a quick walk up the street to see if we can figure out which house or building used to be the brothel. Not sure if we'll be able to figure that out though. It's not like there's gonna be some sign on it that says old brothel. Hey. It's just gonna be somebody's house. One thing I wanna mention is that if you decide to come out to Kingston, it doesn't really have a downtown like Hillsboro. It's more of a small community of people and their homes. So just be mindful of that. Interesting, I don't see anything that looks like it used to be an old brothel yet. But I do see this, an old pickup truck off in the distance. Well, as luck would have it, I ran into one of the locals and she told me a really interesting story about Sadie Orchard's girls who worked for her. Apparently on Sundays, they used to come up here and sit on the rocks and drink a form of opium called laudron. I guess it was some kind of medicinal drink that was probably prescribed for women with depression. And considering their line of work, I guess I could see why they would want to come up here and get away from it all. True or not, I don't know. If nothing else, it gives us a really great story and the opportunity to see the town from up above. She was also telling me that they believe that Sadie's brothel used to be up here. And the reason they believe that the brothel was up here is that when they were digging around the property, they found different items, tokens that would have belonged to women back in the day, broken pieces of glass, you know, little trinkets, little keys that perhaps would have unlocked rooms. So not exactly what I would have thought a brothel would have looked like back in the day, but then again, you know, when we were in Texas and I was looking at that one house, oh, that was in Mingus, and I thought it was really cool looking and had no idea that was a brothel. I guess there's no telling what these properties or old buildings used to be. It's kind of like the old saying goes, can't judge a book by its cover. Guess you can't judge a brothel by the house it is now. Supposedly, Kingston was one of the wildest towns of the West here in New Mexico. As you can see, today, that's not the case. It's so quiet, I almost feel like I have to whisper. Imagine it's rather peaceful living here, although the woman I talked to did mention that the highway runs right behind their property and that in summer, all you can hear are motorcycles running up and down it so you know a lot of traffic on the main highway i just wonder how many people actually stop here in kingston during its heyday stories about the town circulated in newspapers as far east as chicago and new york this here is the fire station probably run by volunteers Surprisingly, it still has its original bell that was used to warn people of fire and floods and other dangers. And then directly across the street is the old Percha Bank, used as the post office after the town went bust. Now it's in the process of being restored to its former glory. If I'm not mistaken, at one time there used to be a mercantile next door to it and then on the other side would have been a drugstore and a saloon. Anyways, that's the old bank. I wonder if anybody ever tried to rob it back in the day. Built with a Diebold Bank vault and two foot thick stone walls, it is said that although $7 million of silver passed through here, no one ever broke into or robbed the bank. I know one person who didn't try robbing this bank though, and that's Billy the Kid. Yes, something I find totally surprising that I learned is that Billy the Kid never robbed any banks during his time. Which, can you imagine living here with men like Billy the Kid and Jack Blackjack Ketchum running around the town? 
That probably explains why this town was never really a family type town. It was known to be a town mainly of men, wild men, the miners and all the other type of men that come along with trying to run their hustles. And because of that, it wasn't, like I said, family oriented. However, that didn't stop it from having a school at one time. And this here happens to be it. Nowhere near the size of the one that we saw in Lake Valley. Which kind of adds some validity to the statement that Kingston wasn't really a family town because if it was, there would have been a lot more kids and the school would have been a lot bigger. Now something I want to mention about Kingston before I forget. At one time, supposedly there were like 22 saloons here and the saloons were ones that operated all night long and supposedly you could get oysters, fresh oysters served to you in one of these saloons. Speaking of saloons, there used to be a saloon by the name of Hole in the Wall Saloon somewhere over in this area. And then the Black Range Lodge was built in the 1930s using stones gathered from the tumble down ruins of Pretty Sam's Casino and the Monarch Saloon. One thing I wanted to mention before we move on is that we discovered that that little building right back there used to be the old jail. How's that for handy access to the bank? Nowadays, it's actually where you would go to get your massage should you come here for one. If you're looking around Kingston and wondering what happened to all the old historic buildings, you're not alone. And that's because when the silver boom ended, when the bust happened, people started leaving Kingston and moved farther down. They moved towards Hillsboro. And when they left, they didn't pack up just their belongings. They also took with them buildings. When the town folded up, buildings were torn down for materials to be used elsewhere. Much of the material is said to have ended up being reused in Hillsboro. So we're quite lucky to be able to see places like the old Assay office still intact. This, by the way, if you didn't know, is where you would have brought your minerals, your gold, your silver, to have them looked at to determine their worth, their quality. <laughs> Looking down here at the end of Main Street, we can see just how quiet of a community Kingston really is. I imagine if Billy the Kid or Butch Cassidy could time travel from the past into our present day, they would be shocked at what Kingston looks like compared to what it used to be. because modern day Kingston doesn't look anything like the rowdy old western town it was and more like a quiet, serene place to retreat. Such is the story of this old silver mining boomtown, one whose memories appear larger than life. Should you one day happen upon her, I expect you'll discover what still makes her a gem of the Black Range today.